Hey guys, thanks for coming back to my channel. Today we're gonna reset Chili's front shoes. They've been super glued on. They're Easy Care Versa Light with stealth cuffs. And let's jump right into it. I like to use a flathead screwdriver when I need to remove the stealth cuffs. And I start at the back of the cuff by the heel. These Versa Grip lights are made by Easy Care, and the Stealth tabs are heat welded on. And if you're curious about this whole application from six weeks prior, there will be a link at the end of this video. When you get close to the cuff being completely separated from the hoof wall, you'll hear a very satisfying pop. It will be a little louder than just prying the cuff away from the hoof wall. For Chili, I end up nailing a couple sets of shoes on his front feet and then gluing a couple sets of shoes on his front feet. And the reason for doing this is it allows his hoof wall to have a break from the nails and keep the hoof wall nice and strong. One of the questions I'm often asked is how do you know how much foot to trim off a horse? For Chili, when the sole becomes waxy, when the, the exfoliating sole or chalky sole becomes live looking, shiny looking, that is when you stop removing any sole. He used to be quite flat-footed, and you can see that he's starting to get a little bit of a cut to his foot by not removing too much of his sole. Trimming is purely a subtractive process, and once you've removed the material, it becomes a little bit more of a headache if you need to add it back on. There are some subtle differences in how I trim a foot for nailing on a shoe versus gluing on a shoe. And while I have finished trimming this foot, mostly for nailing a shoe back on, I'm going to come back and dress the wall so that it is better suited for a glue on shoe. The edges of the cuff can end up being quite sharp. So what I like to do is get rid of the sharp edge by removing any excess super glue and bringing the cuff back to a square edge. Red Label Abrasive has been an awesome company to get my belts from. I'm using a silicon carbide belt. It has a sharper granule on it that works really well with urethane or rubber products and it doesn't run quite as hot as other belts. So it doesn't tend to melt the urethane rubber. Use a stiff wire brush to remove the large chunks of dirt and then I like to use a 9931 Dremel bit to clean up the cuff. Another tool that I sometimes like to use is this 2 inch wire wheel on the end of my drill and this works really fast and efficiently at cleaning up the cuff and shoe. Now that my shoes are clean I go ahead and use a hoof buffer to clean up the outer wall of the hoof wall. One of the important steps of cleaning the hoof wall is having the hoof wall roughed up. I use a 60 grit sleeve on my hoof buffer and this way I can clean the wall as well as have it already roughed up all in one step. And then I'll use a clean wire brush, one that has not been used to scrape dirt off a shoe or the bottom of the foot to remove any of the dust on the hoof wall. As a preventative measure, I'm using a small amount of field paste in the sole wall junction, the commissures, and the central sulcus of the frog to help combat against fungus and bacteria. I add a small bevel or camphor to the hoof wall from about the widest part of the foot forward. This allows my cuff of the shoe to lay flatter against the hoof wall as well as me be able to place the shoe where I want it. Once I'm satisfied with how the shoe fits and how the cuff lay against the wall, I'll have all my glue material ready. So in this case, I need some stretch wrap, uh, some electrical tape, MaxiCure super glue, and some InstaSet to help the super glue set up quickly when needed. I find that there's a fine line between too much super glue and not enough super glue. What I do is I'll go ahead and apply just enough glue that when the cuff 
lays flat against the foot and I gently touch it, a little bit of glue oozes out around the edges. Super glue also sets up best when it's under pressure. So I'm gonna start out by doing a few wraps of stretch wrap around the shoe and foot, making sure I don't twist it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use some electrical tape to really pull down the cuffs tight to the hoof wall. Electrical tape can leave a black residue against the hoof wall and cuffs. So what I've done is used my initial layer of stretch wrap to protect it from leaving that black residue on it and then go ahead and use as much tape as I want. Generally speaking, the warmer the environment and higher the humidity, the faster the super glue will set up. So summertime with some humidity can set up really fast, 10 minutes. Wintertime, maybe you need to wait as long as 30 minutes or even longer. When it comes to final finish, if I know I'm gonna use a new shoe on the next visit, I will blend the cuff into the hoof wall. It has a nice smooth transition. However, if I'm resetting the shoe, I will not blend the cuff into the hoof wall. This way it allows the cuff to have more integrity and it doesn't tear when I go ahead and pull it off the hoof wall. Adding a final top coat of super glue is really beneficial. It helps with cuff retention and strengthening the hoof wall. A tip I learned from Garrett Ford is using a piece of stretch wrap to go ahead and spread the super glue around the hoof wall. Instead of using a new disposable glove, I found this to be really a handy trick. Not only does it strengthen the wall and help with cuff retention, it does leave a nice final aesthetics and final finish. I'll end up spraying the foot with Instaset. This allows the super glue to set up rapidly so when I put the foot on the ground, dirt or hay doesn't end up sticking to it. Hey, thanks for watching in. If you've liked this video, please take the time to subscribe, like it, ring the bell. That's it for now. Cheerio, have a great day.